Welcome back, Guardians. We are in a bit of a lull in Destiny at the moment, and so I thought it would be a great time to revisit some older lore. Specifically, the lore from Forsaken, where Prince Aldrin first explores the Black Garden. Why is this significant? Well, this is thought to be where Aldrin was first corrupted, and this season, Season of the Lost, has hinted at this idea that Crow will make the same mistakes as Aldrin did or that Crow will be corrupted again, or that Crow cannot escape his destiny. Is Crow destined to be a pawn in Marasov's cosmic chess game? Bungie straight up said this in the recent Witch Queen tease, saying is Crow a pawn or an ally? This video will be divided into three parts. In part one, I'm going to take you through all the little hints that Bungie has been dropping about the Black Garden and Aldrin this season, Season of the Lost. Part two will recap the lore book, The Forsaken Prince, primarily when Aldrin was first corrupted in the Black Garden. And finally, part three will put this all together to speculate on Crow's narrative arc, specifically if Crow can make his own fate or if he's destined to be a pawn. But before starting, this video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. Now, I actually sought out the Ridge Wallet as a sponsor because I hate bulky wallets. And I know I don't really leave the office or the home very often, but if I do have to go outside and I do have to put pants on, or even worse, if I have to put a suit on, there is nothing worse than having a bulky wallet. Or if you're Australian, we are coming into summer and good luck getting this into your board shorts, into your boardies. So yesterday I went to the beach, took my Ridge wallet and it was great. It's small. It's durable, it's compact. You can fit up to 12 cards. Make sure I don't show you my credit card. And so you can fit 12 cards in there. And there's also a money clip on the back. And there you go. There's some Australian Monopoly money for you. You can go surfing with that. It's plastic. It's also made of RFID blocking technology to stop any digital pickpocketers. So. If you want to check out the Ridge Wallet, click the link in the description and use coupon code MYLAN for 15% off. If you don't like it, but you will, but it just if you don't like it, within 45 days, you can send it back for a full refund. This is MYLAN Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Thanks to Twitch chat for helping with researching this video. Let's get into it. Part 1. All the times the Black Garden is mentioned or hinted at in Season of the Lost and what it might mean. In week 4 of Season of the Lost, there's a terminal next to the Wayfinder's compass where you can hear a conversation between a Korra Ray and Marasov. Mara specifically mentions that the Black Garden made Aldrin sick. Now, we've always suspected that the Black Garden was the origin of Aldrin's corruption. However, it was never really said outright. And on top of that, Riven also influenced Aldrin, which eventually led to the events of Forsaken. Have a listen to what Mara says about the Black Garden and Aldrin in week four of Season of the Lost. How long have your hidden been privy to Aldrin's resurrection? Long enough to watch over him in your absence. And you didn't direct him home. Why? There was a concern he'd pick up some old habits. You know the god made him sick. Riven twisted his mind. Eris would have seen it. She is not so easily deceived by skin-deep tricks. Right, now this is not the only reference to the Black Garden in Season of the Lost. You can also find a hidden cache in the Shattered Realm, where you hear a story from Marasov about a Tekken named Malori. Mara says that this Tekken was lost to the Black Garden. Have a listen. This mausoleum is a memorial to a Tekken, Malori, the first wayfinder to traverse this ley line. 
Mallory was brilliant, like a star burning in the blackness of space, a beacon for others, aspirational. But it was her insatiable curiosity that took her life when she ventured into the Black Garden against my wishes and never returned. Moving along, week seven of Season of the Lost also provides a subtle hint at the Black Garden. Week seven introduced an exotic sparrow called Eternal Recurrence. This sparrow describes a conversation between Petrovenge and Jolion Till. Jolion was a very good friend of Aldrin, and together they were the first awoken to explore the Black Garden. So, reintroducing Jolion is very much a prompt to the player to start thinking about the Black Garden again. The sparrow which features Jolion is called Eternal Recurrence. Eternal meaning to last forever, without end, and recurrence meaning to occur again. My interpretation of this is that they are trying to imply that Aldrin is caught in a loop, where he's destined to be corrupted again, manipulated and a pawn in someone else's cosmic chess game. In other words, history repeating itself. The fourth and final hint about the Black Garden from Season of the Lost is more speculative and occurs in week six, and more specifically can be found in the lore book Ripples. The week six lore entry revealed that Crow traveled to Venus for an unknown reason. At this stage, we don't know if Crow has already been to Venus or if this entry is set further in the future. However, we do know that during the Halloween event, Crow is with Keitel on her ship. So I don't know if Crow goes to Venus after liaising with Keitel or if it has technically already happened. Regardless, Venus is very significant for a number of reasons. While it's not how we, the Guardian, access the Black Garden, other Guardians have accessed the Black Garden through Venus, specifically the story of the Night Stalker Tevis, who was introduced in Destiny 1. But also, the Warlock Thanatonaut Pujari threw himself from the cliffs of the shores of time to intentionally die, and in death Pujari had a vision of the Black Garden. What happens to Bajari in the Black Garden vision is very similar to what happens to Aldrin when he is corrupted in the Black Garden. So I'm speculating that Crow headed to Venus to investigate his past about the Black Garden, primarily because if Crow can understand how he was first corrupted and manipulated, maybe he can prevent the same thing from happening again. Okay, that is part one, all the little hints about the Black Garden this season. Right, so let's move on to part two of this video. How was Aldrin first corrupted in the Black Garden? This section is going to focus on the Forsaken Prince lore book from the Forsaken expansion. Hold on to your lore pants, because this is complicated. The first two entries of the lore book are called The Length of a Chain, and they describe Aldrin talking with his friend Jolion about being the first to explore the Black Garden. In these entries, Aldrin is very jovial. He says things like, Jolion, my man, and jokes about he is the one with all the charm in his family. Aldrin. Charming. In The Length of a Chain Part 2, Aldrin is so loved by the people, he essentially has groupies. Aldrin has fans and followers. In my opinion, the intention of these two entries is twofold. The first is to make it really obvious that Aldrin had a completely different personality before going into the Black Garden, hinting at what Mara said this season, the garden made him sick. And the second reason for these entries is to illustrate Aldrin's relationship with Mara. Aldrin is trying to prove that he has free will, that he can make decisions without Mara and he chose to investigate the Black Garden because Mara restricted this area. In his mind, this was how he was going to prove his freedom. Have a listen to the law entry, Length of a Chain, Part 2. It reads, If you hurl yourself away from someone to test the length of your chain, you cannot know the chain's length until it draws you short. Does that make sense? Aldrin thinks so. Aldrin is afraid so. Either he is truly free of his sister, free to choose to stand at her side, to choose of his own free will, or the chain is longer than he has managed to run. 
And that is why these two entries are called the length of a chain. Aldrin is trying to work out if he is tethered to Marasov, if he is metaphorically chained to her. Keep this in mind for later, as this will be important in part three of this video. Moving along, Aldrin and Jolion decide to secretly enter and explore the Black Garden, and like us, they enter the Black Garden through the gate on Mars. I won't go into all the details because it's not important for the video, but an interesting thing to note from these entries is that Aldrin already has a strong dislike for Guardians. So before Aldrin is corrupted, he does not like Guardians. And this dislike, I think, is enhanced after the Black Garden visit. Have a listen to the law entry at the gate, part one. It reads, he hates the traveler's horse flies the way anyone would hate an infant godling issued with coloring book morality and a whining know-nothing paperweight. They are self-righteous, cocksure, callously instrumental intruders in a system they don't need to understand. He hates that most, the ability to move through the world without caring about how it works. Right, so Aldrin and Jolion enter the Black Garden, and this is where stuff starts to get really weird. They discover that everything grows in the Black Garden, including them. They make the comment on how their fingernails are growing really quickly. They begin to see strange things, like hollow beetles. They see plants with circuit boards for roots. Jolion is also pricked by a vine in the garden. However, it doesn't seem to have much impact on him, or at least is not really noted in the law. Aldrin, however, just seems to be instantly affected by just being in the garden. He becomes almost manic and even protective of the Black Garden. Have a listen to the law entry in the garden. It reads, It's life, he breathes. You're right, Joel. Everything grows here. He cannot let this place be killed. He cannot let it be looted and overthrown like everything else that doesn't fit into the narrow binary dogmas of the Traveler's undead warriors. Excitement seizes him and he runs ahead, sloshing through the muck, laughing aloud. Aldrin! Jolion shouts after him. What are you looking for? I don't know, he cries back. That's what's so incredible. I can't know. Now, as Aldrin and Jolion continue to explore the Black Garden, things continue to get very strange. They discover a wounded Cabal who has been abducted by the Vex, and Aldrin questions this Cabal soldier at knife point. This provides some cryptic information to why the Vex are in the Black Garden, but also this idea that the Black Garden has secrets, and the Garden planted secrets inside of the Cabal. I know, it's very weird. The Cabal removed its helmet to reveal a head that is pitted like a strawberry. I know, it's even weirder and grosser. It's very hard to explain. Let me read you the law from the On The Hunt law entry, and then I'll give you my interpretation. The Whispers have taken on a soft hint of Ullerant grammar, confirming Aldrin's suspicion. This is a place where abstract patterns war for survival fighting to propagate themselves by preying on each other. The Vex are singing to see how the garden changes their song, and even this conversation has fertilized the air. Why are they here? What do they want? They come here to pray, sir. They're making vessels out of themselves. They're the worst things ever to be, sir. They ate existence. How do you know this? Oh, from the seeds, sir, the legionary says. Do you see them? Without hesitation or second thought, he punches the emergency medic release on his helmet. The pressure seal breaks and a ring of black gel sprays out, hissing. The legionary slumps over. His helmet tumbles into his broad lap. Beneath a layer of gel, the whole surface of his skull has a pitted texture of a strawberry. Thousands of tiny seeds glisten in the cabal's flesh. Aldrin brushes the skin in fascination. Aldrin, Jolion radios. I really don't like the expression on your face. This place has secrets, the prince murmurs back. The bone mica feels cold and inorganic, poorly matted to his flesh compared to the warm, close-packed pits of the legionary's deformed skull. So many secrets. 
They grew in him, Jolion. The garden grew its secrets in him. Okay, like what does that even mean? Well, my best interpretation is this. The Black Garden is absorbing information, but also giving information. It said how the Vex were singing to see how the Black Garden changed their song. But in my opinion, the real emphasis in this lore entry is on the secrets. In the Black Garden, you can discover the answer to many things. Secret things. Knowledge about the universe. This Cabal knew about the Vex because the Garden planted these secrets in him. Aldrin is interested in this concept because Mara keeps many secrets. She never reveals her plans. She tricked the Awoken about their creation. She's always scheming. Secrets are important to the Awoken. So, the Black Garden is appealing to Aldrin because it contains all these secrets. And even though Aldrin is trying to prove that he has free will, that he is separate from his sister, he's also trying to impress her. Which probably proves the length of the chain. Even when he's trying to escape her, he's always trying to get back to her. And the end of this lore entry on the hunt reinforces that Aldrin is still trying to impress his sister. Have a listen. But Aldrin can't stop imagining how astonished Mara would be at this place. What if he could bring her here? What if they could explore this place together? I think the main point is the importance of secrets to the Awoken people and Aldrin's internal struggle with simultaneously trying to prove he's independent from his sister while also trying to impress her. Right, as the law book progresses, time jumps forward to when Aldrin and Jolion have already escaped the Black Garden. Aldrin meets with Marisov and he brings to her a red flower from the Black Garden. This flower is then planted in the Dreaming City and is known as Asphodelia. Asphodelia is significant because to the Awoken people it represents both life and death. It can be both destructive and supportive. Have a listen to the Scannable from the Dreaming City talking about Asphodelia. It says, Asphodelia flowers are taboo to pick, except under special circumstances. Getting a thorn lodged in your skin causes paranoia, madness, violence. But the petals themselves, steeped in tea, bring peace and enlightenment. And this... Pink Asphodelia is grown only in the Dreaming City. And we do not pick the flowers except to celebrate a birth or mourn a death. They have a unique power over the Awoken soul. I'm assuming that Asphodelia is very important to Aldrin's corruption origins, although it's not specifically said. Aldrin goes on to describe to Mara his memories of what happened in the Black Garden. He describes running through a thorny grove where he's pricked. I'm assuming he was pricked by the thorns of Asphodelia. I would speculate that this was the definitive point of Aldrin's original corruption. The other interesting thing about Aldrin's recollection of running through this thorny grove is that it mimics the experience of the warlock Pujari. In the memory, the grove has fruit that looks like ghosts, and after he is pricked, Aldrin describes his hallucination. The hallucination involves a cabal, a talking vex goblin, and a laundry room where the crows, Aldrin spies, are in a tumble dryer. Huh? I know, it's completely insane. But more importantly, he had a hole in his hand. This description is very similar to the experience of the Warlock Pujari. The Warlock Pujari describes a vision of the Black Garden where he sees a red flower, Asphodelia, in the shape of a ghost. And he receives a thorn cut in his hand, which never heals. Even though he physically was not in the Black Garden, he had a vision of the Black Garden after jumping from the shores of time on Venus. The similarities between what Aldrin experienced and what Pujari experienced suggest that both were pricked by the thorns of Asphodelia. Now, the other detail I did not mention is that the reason why Aldrin is telling Mara about all these memories from the garden is because Mara is very interested if he saw the heart of the Black Garden. We do not know why Mara is interested in the heart. We do not know what Mara knows about the heart. And Aldrin is not really being very helpful. 
for whatever reason, he is losing his memory about what happened in the garden. A little bit like a fading dream. That being said, he provides information to Mara about the heart, saying, isn't it obvious? The heart is bait. Bait for people like guardians who destroy whatever they don't understand. My interpretation of this is like the Cabal who had secrets planted in them and they instinctually knew about the Vex and what they were trying to do. It looks like Aldrin has had something similar happen to him. For whatever reason, he just knows about the heart of the Black Garden. Okay, moving along, as the book continues, Aldrin's obsession with the Black Garden grows. Aldrin is having dreams about the garden. He becomes protective of the garden. He doesn't want guardians to go there and potentially ruin it. He speculates that the garden is the opposite of the Traveller, and he continues with this obsession that the garden contains these secrets, secrets he wants to discover. Oppositely, Jolyon, his friend, wants nothing to do with the Black Garden. Jolyon, like Aldrin, has very little memory of their experience. Their memories are fading like a weird dream. But in general, Jolyon wants nothing to do with the garden. Now, this law book, The Forsaken Prince, is basically divided into two sections. The first section is what I just described, which is essentially Aldrin exploring the Black Garden and being corrupted. The second section begins after the Awoken War with Oryx and Aldrin has just crash landed on Mars. This describes how Riven influenced Aldrin leading up to the events of Forsaken, which was Aldrin escaping the prison of elders and killing Cade 6. The tricky thing about this section is it doesn't specifically say it is Riven influencing Aldrin, because Aldrin thinks he is communicating with his sister, Marisov. Aldrin becomes obsessed with finding his sister after the battle with Oryx, even though it looked like she had died. This is basically the plotline of Forsaken. Riven is posing as Marisov in order to trick Aldrin to release her from captivity in the Dreaming City. Now, the really confusing part to this whole story is we don't really understand how Riven started this manipulation. We know that shortly after the Awoken battle, Oryx invaded the Dreaming City and took Riven. We know that when Aldrin landed on Mars after the battle, he describes this itch in his eye. This is the theme throughout the second half of the lore book, The Forsaken Prince. Every time this itch in his eye flares up, he hallucinates about Marasov, who we know is actually Riven. In the Forsaken cutscene, we see this itch in Aldrin's eye, and this is thought to be the darkness. But like I said, it's sort of also linked to Riven somehow. In the end, we don't really understand the mechanisms to Riven's influence, but we know that like Mara said, Aldrin first got sick in the garden, but then Riven twisted his mind. So it's sort of like Aldrin was compromised and then Riven took advantage of that to manipulate Aldrin to try and free her. At one point, Aldrin actually uses Riven, unknowingly, to make a wish. And this is what revives the scorned Baron, Fickrel, with Dark Aether. Have a listen to the Fanatic Part 2 from the Forsaken Prince law book. It reads, He triages the Archon's wounds. Mortal. The victim is shaking now trembling under Aldrin's hands. He wants so badly to do something, anything to ease the poor soldier's passing, to have the power some say his sister had, to save, just by proximity. Does he wish it? Does he wish to save this poor thing? He does. He does. His eyes burn with sympathetic tears as he works to bind the Archon's wounds. His hands are quick and gentle, and he weeps with the strength of his hatred for the guardians that did this. As tears stain the Archon's wounds, the ether roiling through Aldrin's fingers slowly grows heavier, darker, more noxious. He does not notice. Finally, he leans back to smear his knuckles across his eyes. Sore. They're always so sore. Under the unmarked helmet, four dead eyes open in wonder. The Archon croaks a word a broken leftover of a dying hallucination, calling out to whoever he wanted to see, welcoming him into the afterlife. 
dad. Now, I'm neglecting a side plot at the moment, so stick with me, Forsaken has ridiculous amounts of lore. Just before this, Uljan basically takes over the House of Kings and recruits the Fallen for the sole purpose of trying to find Marasov. Uljan would later have the Kell of Kings killed by Fickrel as he had no further use for them. This is a really strong theme through the second half of the book. The only thing Aldrin cares about is recovering Mara and fulfilling her grand plan. Even though he has no idea what this plan is, and at this point everyone else believes Mara is actually dead. Have a listen to the lore entry free part 1, where Aldrin is talking with the Techian, Elin. It reads, We all exist through her design, Elin. We all act only by her consent. I'm going to save her because she needs me to save her. When she needs me to die, I will die. And when she has completed her great design for the Awoken, the Awoken will die too. It is the reward we so richly deserve, for we owe everything to Mara. It would be wrong for us to outlive our purpose. Trust me, life without her is worse than, worse than. Okay, now we don't quite know why, but Olgen would then surrender himself to Petra, and this is how he ends up in the Prison of Elders. Jolion, his friend, is actually one of the people who helps bring him in, but Olgen has zero recollection of him. Jolion does seem to have maintained some memories though, as he talks about still dreaming of the Black Garden in the Supremacy Law tap. The thing is, the Forsaken Prince lore book sort of just ends, and you actually have to go and read the other lore book, Most Loyal, to see how the events of Forsaken take place. In short, Aldrin is in the Prison of Elders and continually tormented by Riven, posing as Marasov. Aldrin sort of becomes a catalyst for Varix to abandon the Prison of Elders. Sort of. It's complicated, but you know what happens next. How's your sister? Right. That is a very, very detailed breakdown of Aldrin's original corruption in the Black Garden. So we should have all the information we need to move on to part three of this video, which is me putting it all together to make a prediction of Crow's narrative arc is he destined to be a pawn or will he have free will? The best way to do this is with a paint picture. I'm going to describe Aldrin's history and then compare it to the story of Crow right now. Okay, Aldrin's history in picture form. We start off with good guy Aldrin. He's jovial, he's funny, he's charming. He is nothing like we remember from Destiny 1. He is so likable, he actually has fans, he has groupies, he has awoken followers that chase him down. Aldrin wanted to prove that he was independent from Marisolf, the length of a chain. He wanted to prove that if he was going to stand by Marisolf's side, it was by his own decision. And so what he decided to do was go into the Black Garden with his friend Jolion because this was restricted by Marasov. So he thought if he went here, this would prove that he had independence. Once in the Black Garden, everything becomes very odd, very strange, uh, specifically finding a wounded Cabal who had a head like strawberries. And Aldrin thought that this contained secrets, that the Black Garden planted secrets in this Cabal. And this becomes a theme. He becomes obsessed with the idea of the garden containing secrets. We also find out that he ran through a grove of uh, vines or thorns, or at least was pricked by some sort of thorn. And we are assuming this was from the flower Asphodelia. And the reason for that is the warlock Pujari, who went to Venus and threw himself from the shores of time to die and had a vision of the Black Garden, also describes picking up this red flower and uh, being pricked by it. And he ended up having this cut in his hand that never healed. And this is what Aldrin hallucinates about as well. So likely the definitive time that Aldrin started to, 
to be corrupted. Although he was sort of going a little bit crazy as soon as he got into the Black Garden. Then the second half of the lore book is broken up into when the Awoken take on Oryx. They have that massive battle. The Awoken lose. Everyone thinks Marasov is dead. And we get that scene where Aldrin... Um, is, <laughs> is in his ship screaming would later find out he crash lands on mars and he, this is the first time it's documented that he has this darkness this itch in his eye that he keeps scratching at aldrin thinks he's speaking with marasov and he becomes obsessed with getting mara back that she has his grand plan and that he needs to find her uh when you actually play the forsaken campaign you realize that this is not Marasov and that it's Riven taking advantage of Aldrin to uh, free herself from the Dreaming City. Aldrin hands himself in, goes in the prison of Elders. Sorry, he revives Fickrel and then a bunch of other stuff happens. He hands himself in, goes in the prison of Elders, the Barons are captured and then eventually we get to... Uh, Varix releasing all the prisoners from the prison of elders and during the prison break Cade 6 is killed so are any of these things repeating is history repeating for this season right now some of them yes so let's go through them one by one golden uh oh golden Aldrin, good guy golden <laughs> yeah a little bit we sort of do have Aldrin good guy right now does he have followers uh let's not really but the length of a chain definitely 100 percent think this is what's happening right now aldrin discovers his history his past from sabathun and then what does he do he runs away he tries to get as much distance as possible from marasov you could interpret that as him testing the length of a chain because it's exactly what he says in um in in the forsaken law book and he, he didn't know if he had run far enough from mara to see if he was tethered to her or not you know metaphorically chained to her so i think this is potentially where we are in the cycle now although there hasn't been other events that happen yet what is interesting is they have added all the elements are here so for example they added Joel Yon. Joel Yon has been pushed back into the law, and we know that that's the next thing to occur with with Aldrin and Joel Yon going to the Black Garden. Secrets. This obsession with secrets. Well, Aldrin has the greatest secret: his past life. Maybe you could argue there is a theme of secrets already occurring in this season specifically about Aldrin's oh I keep saying Aldrin Crow's identity sorry I have to switch to Crow now the Asphodelia the red flowers well many people have spotted the red flowers in the Witch Queen in Savathun's throne world there are red flowers in her throne world is this Asphodelia the potential corruption of old or past Aldrin of Crow this time around. Uh, we know that Crow is either planning on going to Venus or has already been to Venus. And this links back to Pujari and the Black Garden. So you can see, although I think we're probably here in the loop, if there is a loop, a lot of these elements are actually being set up already or potentially there. What would need to happen is something, I mean, this is Riven, something to first initially corrupt Crow, but then someone to manipulate Crow, and most people would say that would be Savathun. So Savathun's in a position to do that. This section here where uh, Aldrin crash lands on Mars and is separated from Mara is sort of what's also happening as well. Crow separated himself from his sister, Marasov, to test the length of the chain. And so, right now, there's not a huge... As you can see, there's not a huge amount of evidence to say, yeah, history is repeating itself. But what you can see is, 
a lot of the elements are there and it's just going to be a matter if Bungie decide to go down this track and decide that Crow is fated to be a pawn in this cosmic chess game, which I think would be really interesting. I don't really want to lose Crow. I think he's a great character. I think they've done a great job at redeeming his character. Um, it would be terribly sad for him to be in a position where he's just manipulated again, but that would also make a great story. And a lot of the elements are there to make it happen. Oh, baby. I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. That concludes part three of this video. A like and a comment would be greatly appreciated. If you can't think of a comment, you can just leave the words crow to see if history is about to repeat itself. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.